Hello. Hi, it's Loretta West. I am a certified Zen Tangle teacher, soul collage facilitator, and all around art gal. And today we're going to have a fun Zen Tangle inspired class with a Halloween spooky theme. It's going to be a lot of fun, and I hope you'll join me. And be sure to uh, like and comment on this video and subscribe if you would care to see more videos come to your inbox. You can also donate to the channel on the banner of the uh, homepage on the right hand side. Little tiny, tiny, tiny print says donate. So you're welcome to do that. That would really help to keep it all going and free for most people. So let's start. Today you're going to need some paper. I am using uh, mixed media Strathmore paper, but if you just have copy paper and are using dry media, it'll work just fine. This is for wet and dry media. However, I will say some things about it. It is only 90 pounds per, or sorry, for ream of paper. So to explain what that means. So it means that they have a set dimension of what the paper is. I don't know what it is, can't remember, but um, a thousand sheets of it are 90 pounds. So it's a lighter paper. If you say, for example, would you want to use a watercolor paper? Most of that is 140 pounds. So it's a heavier paper. And then it goes up to 300 pounds, which is a much heavier paper. So with this being only 90 pounds, yes, it does work for wet media, as you can see here. I used uh, ink tents on here, but you probably can't see it, but it's a little, well, you can, it's a little warped. And uh, so it can take some water, but it can't take a lot of water. So if you like to get really splashy, I would recommend, um, if you're using watercolor, that is today, that you um, try a watercolor paper of 140 pounds or more. Um, possibly you might want to look at a hot press, which is smoother than a cold press for the ink work would be much easier. The um, brand that I use is called Arches. And, uh, but there's lots of other ones out there. Fabriano makes them, Canson makes them, Strathmore makes them. Um, but that's Arches is my preferred because of the whiteness of the paper. Um, so there, so that's all about the paper I'll be using. And then you're going to need a pencil. I have this HB pencil um, and a pen. And I'm using a Faber-Castell pit pen because I'm gonna be using some watercolor and I wanna make sure that the ink stays on the paper and doesn't get all smeared by the water. So if you're going to be using watercolor or watercolor pencil today, you might wanna think about what kind of pen you're gonna be using, what kind of ink and make sure it's water resistance or water fast. This actually says it on here, if you can read this very tiny, it says Indian ink, waterproof and maximum light fastness. That's what you're looking for. And um, you're going to, if you're using watercolor like I am today, you're gonna to need some colors, but you could use watercolor, or, or sorry, colored pencil or markers today or no color at all. It's up to you. So I am using some super color soft pencils by Karen Dash. I've had these for a very long time. I see somebody's missing. Oh dear. Um, and what I like about them is that they are soft. So that means that when you use them dry, they're pretty blendable. Not as blendable as a Prismacolor, like these are. Not quite as soft as that, but fairly good. And also that when you add the water to activate them, they are bright, which we like. And I believe they are also, let's see what they're, usually on the back, if it's a proper, if it's a well-made product, on the back it'll have a rating, something about how light fast they are. And I don't know if it says it on here. Um, Courses in a zillion languages that I don't read. I don't, I don't see anything on here specifically about that. But if you're unsure about life fastness, you can go online and look up 
the product that you wanted to use and and Google that product light fastness and somebody will have done an experiment and will tell you what's what. Okay, so I'm also got some uh, Prismacolor pencils. So we're going to use for a little shading after the paint is dried. And to paint with, you're, I'm going to need today a couple of pencils. I'm just for pencils. Huh. A couple of brushes. This is a size six Taclon mix by Connoisseur. And I really like these ones. They're soft and they're not too springy. And um, <clears throat> this is a small size because I'm going to be using, you know, working on small things. If I was using or working on a small or larger piece, I would use a larger brush. And um, I've got also a Jack Richardson size eight round brush. This is 9000 Signature Series, which I thought was so special because it has gold on the end, but it's just pretty, pretty average. <laughs> pretty average pen, and it's got more spring than, the, than these ones. Um, not quite as soft. So anyway, that's what I'm using today. And then you're going to need some, if you're using watercolor, you're going to need some sort of water. Um, you can use the watercolor brushes, which are fine. I just find that when I use them, um, they tend to leak out water when I don't want it. So I tend not to use them. And, uh, but you're going to need a goodly amount of water. So many times when I've been to um, workshops or other classes I see or I've given this little tiny cup for water, which means you always have to go back to the spigot and get more water over and over again to make sure your water is clean. Well, if you put in a good amount of water, so it's like two to three cups in here, the sediment from the colors will go to the bottom and you'll have more or less clean water on the top. If you don't have enough volume of water, it'll always mix together and be muddy and suspend in the water and you'll have dirty water. Um, you can also have a, if you want, two buckets, one for dirty water that you rinse your brush off and one for clean. I have enough going on that's hard for me to keep the water out of my coffee, let alone two. So I just find one bucket, lots of water works for me. So let's uh, get going. So I'm going to put a border on mine, but that is optional for you. So with my HB pencil, I just have gold on it, it's special. I'm going to put a dot in each corner. Start with the usual way. By starting things that we do in a ritualistic way, with the four dots, it sets our mind to the task at hand. Okay, and then we're going to draw a line, connecting the dots, and it doesn't have to be a straight line. See that? Can be a, not so straight line. Some friends in there. And still with our pencil, we're going to draw the top of a pumpkin. So about here is going to be the, I'm just going to put a little line there. Oops, Maddie wants in now. That's going to be the top where the stem is. And then uh, down here, we're going to make our pumpkin shape. So remember, pumpkins aren't perfectly round if you really go and look at them. They have flat sides and they have dimples and they have, you know, natural occurring imperfections. So if your pumpkin doesn't look exactly symmetrical, if mine doesn't, you can always add another line there. Um, it's, it's no big deal. It doesn't have to. And then we're going to have our pumpkin lines coming down here, so there, and then over top, I'm just going to draw it right over top of that with my pencil, 
So we're going to have the stem move sort of arching into that. Let me just uh, get that down there for you can see it like that. It's like this. And then I'm going to add a crooked stem. This was sort of my ending point that I just made it, I just changed my mind because I can do that. But if I want, I can have some leaves coming off. Oops. Sort of a jagged edge there. And some pumpkin like leaves. Mine are really funny this morning. That's okay. They're wild. They don't have to be realistic in my mind. So there, I've got this slightly wild looking pumpkin here. It's not perfect, it's okay. No pumpkin is. Then I'm gonna take my pen and we're going to start with, uh, where's my notes here? Um, with Tangle coming down. So all the tangles are going to come down over the top of the uh, top of the um, pumpkin. I don't know if you've seen this. This is where I got this idea. A friend of mine is a forest and she makes these cute little pumpkin arrangements so that she has the flowers coming out of the top and uh, they have faces painted on them and this is cute. So it gave me this idea. And uh, so we're going to do the tangle in a pod. So we're going to have it coming out from here. So just do this kind of lazy S that way and then this way. And then to the inside, I'm going to aura that shape with a slightly C shape. Oops, let me mark there, that would be your bifocals. Okay, and then inside, I'm gonna squish some peas. This time of year, it could be not so much peas, but maybe I'm thinking of those beans that are red. I can't look at the name of them. Use, use them to make succotash. Maybe have another, another one here. You can do it. You can go outside the line of the pumpkin. You can break all the rules. And remember to breathe out and remember to hold your pen lightly as if it were an egg. Here. That's in a pod. I think it's by Carol. I think so. Okay, 
Okay. Just laying some groundwork kind of tangles. And this next one is by, is it Helen Williams? Her um, blog is uh, a little lime.blogspot.com. I don't know if she's still doing this, but her blog still has all the stuff. And this one I think is called Scrolled Feather. That's it. Okay. So we're going to start and we'll do one in the middle. And you do this shape with a little curly cue on the end. And the shape. And then your aura to the inside. What's this one oh, called, Greta? Mm -hmm. What's this called, one called? It's called Scrolled Feather. Thank you. You're welcome. So just aura to the inside a little bit. And you can have some tendrils coming off it. I think I'll do one over here as well. I'm just going to turn my paper so it's a little more convenient for me. I encourage you to do the same. To turn your paper so that it's comfortable for you to draw. And we're all different body wise. So do what's comfortable for you. I'm just going to do a few there. Oh well, I'm going to just go with it. Cold head, I'll take it. So just add a little bit here. Okay, go back and add a few of the tendrils coming with it. She's got a great little blog. Um, I think she's from New Zealand and she runs a sheep farm. And uh, she has this lovely, lovely patterns to learn. This one, I'm going to have to look up the name of it. It's by Lori Manugian. I did a screenshot of the step outs, but it cut off the name of the pattern. <laughs> but it's very cool. I'll show it to you and then look up the name. So you could put this, you know, anywhere where it will fit. It's sort of a flower pattern. I'm going to have it just sitting right beside the stem. And you start with this little loopy line and another one this way and another one that way and that way 
And then coming off this outer one, this little, add some ears, <laughs> little C shapes. It's a really pretty design. And you could have awesome. What's this one called again? I'm going to tell you in a sec. Oh, okay. <laughs> so I thought I missed again. it. Lori oh, okay. Manoog Manoogian is who um, designed it. And I will tell you. And uh, Okay, here it is, Apicor, and it is spelled A-P-A-C-O-R-E, which makes me think of Applecore, that's Apicor. It's very pretty. <clears throat> You can tuck them, tuck another one in somewhere if you'd like. I'll tuck one in over here. Again, you start like that. Side it. Upside down too. Let's see what happens. Goodness. Ears sticking out. Take your time, take a deep breath. This one is cute as well. It's called Amy Baby. And um, it's by Yuru Chen. Spelled A M Y B A B Y. Kind of reminds me of poke leaf, and it's sort of it's very poke leaf like, but it's fun, and it's sort of an acorn shape. So I'm gonna have just you know just pick at random where you want it to stick out. I'm gonna have it stick out on this side maybe. Come off here and just do a little stem. And then starting here on the side of the stem, I'm going to come around and hug it that way. So then we'll put some black in there and some black in there. Then coming off the top of that, I'm going to do this sort of poke leaf shape. I'm going to do another line there and a frilly line and then some merging lines from the bottom to the top from the top to the bottom here Again, if you find that, hey, you know, I've got a another tangle that's going to be just perfect for that area that I'm not teaching today, feel free to jump right in and add it to your creation. 
if anybody knows me or knows my teaching I'm not big on rules so I encourage you to uh, break them okay I have one I'm going to cut off here so it's really a sort of a mishmash on top here a little tangled mess of organic shapes There's another one here called Pra, and it's spelt. Let's see, I'll put this over here. P, oh, that's not P, P R A A by um, Simone Menzel. What did she say? And uh, it's a really cool looking little flower. Let's go and try that one. Have it come over up here, a little stem. And then an I shape, so two C shapes facing one another. Then where the stem comes in, you're gonna do two a bunch of little little orbs in there. And then coming off the orbs is lines with dots on the end, and you make them so that they're all different, they're not in a line. That's pro. It's kind of cool. And then at the end, oh, I've got these little things, these little tufts. I'm just taking my pen and just touching the paper lightly and giving it these tiny little tufts at the end of each one of these little stamens. Sure that trying to balance things out that I don't do too much on one side. Let's have a contact up here. Really simple design and uh, kind of serial looking. Then I found a bunch of flowers. Just an illustration. Some look like mumsy, but some were different. And this one was quite different. And it doesn't have a name. It didn't say who drew it. So I don't know. And if you know this, great. 
I'm just going to start it right here with some intersecting lines. Sort of in the star fashion. I'm going to start adding some that are shorter, maybe longer. And at the end, I'm going to put a little circle and then kind of come back in like a little pipe. Under each one through there. Yeah. Zoom it in for you. This looks so neat and like I said, I don't know the name and I don't know who drew it. But I was looking for something that looked close to a zinnia. That's not even close to a zinnia, but then I found this one and I thought that's really neat. Neat design. Then we're gonna put some leaves in here. So where there's spaces, back a little bit. Let's start putting some leaf designs in here. Just some nice leaf shapes, whatever leaf shape you want. Oak leaves, bay leaves, maple leaves what works for you. Fill in some space. We follow the contours of the pumpkin. We can also do little verbs in here to fill it up. Fill up some of the negative space. Make it look really festive and I'm going to come sort of jam pack in mind that if you want more space, you can create more space, but I'm giving it a real look of abundance. We celebrate the end of summer and the harvest season. Maybe, you know, there's not a lot right now for a lot of people that are struggling, but you can create an abundance with your artwork. You can create a feeling of abundance. And just having these skills and trying them is, is rich, is make you rich. So you can jam more flowers and there are more leaves, whatever you find that you'd like to do. I'm going to just carry on 
and start with uh, outlining this pumpkin shape again. Apologize for my voice, my cold voice. It's not that I had, you know, like 5,000 cigarettes in a bar last night. That's not what I did. Okay. Coming down here, my wonky funny leaves. So go ahead and do the uh, lines of the pumpkin. Parts done. So since I'm going to do watercolor over top, I'm going to take my kneaded eraser and just erase some pencil lines. You don't have to do that. I just find it evens it up a little bit and it keeps the water from dipping into the graphite and making things nice and dirty. So I'm going to go over it. Just with a kneaded eraser, you don't do a lot of rubbing back and forth. You just sort of touch it and if it's dirty, then you knead it back in. It's very gentle on paper. Okay, so I said I've got my um, super color pencils here. So I'm going to try to start with an orange here, a 30. Uh, carmine, the 80, and a uh, ooh, scarlet, the 70. Let's see where that gets me. I've got a um, fairly large uh, brush here for this pumpkin part. Jack Richardson 9000 signature series, number eight. Now, I was in a painting class once and I just, I saw the gold tip on these things. <laughs> I thought they were really fancy. So <laughs> I went and got one because I just, because I had a gold tip. <laughs> it's weird. Okay. They're just pretty much a regular tack long brush, but um, I was into it. Okay. I was into supplies. What can I say? So I'm going to take my, uh, sort of orangey color here in my brush, dip in, make it a little bit wet. I'm gonna go in and here. So you can do it also dry. It just helps to get it going and add a little water to it. I'm just gonna go in these areas where the pumpkin will be shining through. Got this uh, scarlet. It's going to put a little bit of red in there. Again, this is with the dry pencil. Let's 
Let's go and darken up orange. Oops, right there. So I've got to get my brush wet. And I've got a good amount of water here. Okay, see that? That's a lot of water. So you want that. You don't want this little cup of water, unless you want to change your water all the time. Um, if you get a good amount of water, so I've got about two cups, two to three cups of water here. What happens is that the when you clean your brush, the sediment from the paint goes down to the bottom. And every time you dip in, it's clean water on the top. But if you have this little tiny bit of water, it's always going to be muddy. So it's worth it to, to put more water in. I'm just going to take off the paint paper with my brush. See how bright that is? I want to leave a little bit of a space in here to show the curvature of the pumpkin. Okay, you can use markers or color pencils or no color. Just do some shading if you wish with a pencil. But I'm not too worried about going over the lines here because I'm going to go over it with another color probably. I'm just going in with clear water after and then watering the color, watering off the edge there. Go down here and add some of this orangey yellow at the bottom. It's red. So it'll mix together. Oops, let's see that. So there's such a soft pencil that you really don't get a lot of pencil lines when you add the water. She says, hopefully, <laughs> but you don't, because they are so soft. Some of them, like the Derwent harder pencils, you will see a pencil line. So it's just something to think about. So I'm gonna do some, oops, throw your brush around. Here. Over here. That will dry. Now the thing about this paper, it's not watercolor paper, okay? So it will buckle a little bit if you saturate it with water. So you can't use a lot of water on it. I don't know if you can see it's already buckling. It will pretty well, it should dry fairly flat, but um, just something to remember. If you want, if you're using watercolor, you should use watercolor paper. You want it, you know, nice, and not buckled and in good shape. Um, I highly recommend hot press for this because it's smooth. So you want to make sure it's a hot press paper. Um, Arches makes a wonderful one. It's expensive, but it's worth it in my books. Okay. So let's do a little bit of the flower on the top of this thing here. Let's hang on a sec. Let's use this little pink. Pink here. This guy. Add some of this. Top. Little bit of just tinting it really. These colors are quite transparent, and transparent means that you can see the paper underneath. It's yellow here. Put a 
this blue. These things remind me of some under, under sea, these little flowers. Blue there. So you can use the you can color first and then go in with the water. You can also just get the paint on your brush, your wet brush. Apply it like you would a tube or a pen watercolor. So I've got some leaves here. I'll start doing those. Excuse me. So I've got some green. Leaves here, so I'm going to make them give them some fall touches. So, add the green, and then I'll add a little bit of the yellow. Some darker, so I'll color it in first. Orangey red. To dry because there's one thing I didn't add before. I wanted to add a pumpkin. So, if you want to put a face on your pumpkin, like a jack o' lantern, go right ahead. Um, whatever you, you come up with, whatever you invent. Right, you gotcha. Then we can. So I don't want them all orange because I don't want this to all sort of blend with the pumpkin and find something different. So I'm going to do some greens. So I don't tend to use the um, brushes with the reservoir in them for the simple reason I tend to <laughs> hang on too tight and the water goes splurt all over the place. Um, but if you have those brushes and you know how to use them, feel free to use them. But I find that this is easy for me to take a little collapsing cup, which I don't have right here, but I do have them in the kit, a little on the plane or whatever that holds a little bit of water and it's a paper towel. So I've got a little paper towel that I'm dabbing the extra water off with and uh, a good brush. And that's usually all I need. Just play, just have fun and experiment, see what works, what doesn't work.
go and do the green around these inner pods. There too, it's the end of summer. The beans or the peas. That's dry now. So I wanted to add coming up here. Fine. Trying to get size circle and a smaller circle. Black on in. Some creepy, probably legs. Little spider. Stem. Let's do the brown. It's blue. I'm just going to go in and do a little bit of color in here. Stem. And there. I'm not really caring about like where the light comes from, all that stuff. We're just playing. We're just playing. Bit. Let's come on. Start flicking those leaves. So every time I take some water out of my bucket on my brush, then I give it a little bit of a wipe on my paper towel. Just a little, just one, two, that's it. So I don't want to go and bring sopping brush over to this because it'll just make it too wet and things will go everywhere. And that'll be puggy. Hey, Loretta. Yeah. It's Elizabeth. Yeah. I, I treated myself to a nice uh, watercolor bucket thing, and I wanted to share if anybody is into uh, watercolors. Mm -hmm. Probably not like this because it's kind of small, but if you have uh, a lot of watercolor stuff. So when you're done sharing, I, I can, or when, okay. you're, when you're ready to spotlight, if that's okay, okay. with you. All right. Okay. When we're done. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, so I did um, a sample last, over the last couple of days. So there's this one from this morning. And um, then I did this one. And so that gives you an idea of what you can do. Um, it was just fun. So uh, now this is done on Arches cover paper which is kind of a, it's a kind of a printing paper. So it's kind of got this, um, off-white appeal to it. And, uh, but it works for all medium 
It's less expensive than watercolor paper. It doesn't move, the watercolor doesn't move as well on it. So it sort of kind of sticks on there, but it really works well with colored pencil and, or sorry, watercolor pencil. So I wanted to also tell you, so what I did after I did the watercolor, then I went in with my um, Prisma colors and I darkened some of the areas. So I darkened here, you know, places where it was going to overlap. I, I did some darkening with a darker color. So you can do that. It's up to you. Um, just to make things sort of stand out a little bit more. And then the witch I just added because she was cute. And, uh, but just have fun. And, and it's just a lot of fun. Anyway, I'm going to uh, stop the recording, but don't go away. And just want to thank the people that have watched the recording to uh, like and subscribe. And we'll see you soon. Have a happy Halloween.